What's up guys, this is Brad at Hourglass Fab and welcome back to another video. I appreciate everybody who tunes in and watches these videos. It means a great deal to me. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to feed TIG welding filler rod, the important things, the not so important things. You need to be able to feed filler rod, especially on long joints, and if you can't, it's holding you back. There's many ways to do this. I'm gonna show you my way. Hopefully you guys can take something from it. So let's jump into it. Now when it comes to feeding filler rod, what it's made out of, not important. What's important is the diameter of the filler rod. The smaller in diameter, it's gonna be harder to feed. What's gonna help with that is good gloves, good dexterity. If you can feel the rod, you can feed the rod. Being able to feed filler rod is going to multiply your glove life by like nine million. Have you guys ever got your fingers way too close to the puddle? Felt the heat? It's never fun. Now, you can hold the filler rod way at the back so you have two feet of filler rod to dab without being able to feed it, but your accuracy goes out the window. I mean, with all of that filler rod bouncing around right in front of you, it's not really ideal. Now, the closer to the end of the filler rod you hold, the more precision you have. And if you can feed that rod with precision, you're just gonna be a better welder. And you know, I've practiced and practiced and, and watched the videos and watched everybody say, feed filler rod while you're watching TV. And I think that did help, but it didn't really teach me. It was more, I just needed to do it. And I used to struggle so much with feeding filler rod on steel. I just felt like the whole process, steel versus aluminum, steel was so much slower. Now on aluminum, I could feed filler rod all day long because basically I was just pounding rod into the puddle. But when it came to steel, doing so, I felt like I wouldn't be as consistent as I would on aluminum because it's just so much of a slower process. And steel doesn't consume filler rod as fast as aluminum does. Well, let's jump into some welding show some filler rod feeding techniques, talk about that a little bit, see where this goes, keep you guys engaged because that's what's important. We'll see you here in just a second. Now as you can see here, I'm holding my filler rod between my middle finger and index finger and pushing with my thumb. Now you'll get really accurate with this method after a while. This is a manually pulsed cap to a root with a Furic FUPA 12 ceramic cup, awesome cup, some 308 filler rod on some stainless plate just moving right along. You can see the benefits of being able to feed filler rod. You can keep your hands away from the heat and it makes everything so much more consistent. Coming up here is some aluminum, some 332 4043 filler rod just laying it in there trying to be as consistent as possible. You can see how feeding filler rod is extremely beneficial. So the most comfortable way for me to feed filler rod is basically going to be resting between my middle finger and my index finger. And I'm going to be pushing that filler rod with my thumb. That's kind of the standard I think most, at least the majority of people are kind of feeding filler rod that way. It might vary a little bit just depending. Um, but you can be very effective this way. You can feed little tiny amounts where you just add little tiny dabs, or you can literally push an inch of this rod at a time. And that's what you're shooting for. And if you can do that while you're welding, while you're using your right hand, while you're using your foot, it's gonna seriously benefit you. And it's gonna make things so much easier in all positions, whether that's overhead, or I mean, you're laying on your back doing something, or you're just extremely uncomfortable. If you can feed filler rod, and you're comfortable and consistent at it, then it's gonna make your life about a thousand times easier, guys. Trust me on that. Welding without being able to feed filler rod, at least gas tungsten arc welding, obviously, is basically like scuba diving without an oxygen tank. 
there's some things that you just need to get the job done. There's some things that you need to know to be able to accommodate yourself and feel more comfortable with whatever process you're doing. So anyways, if you guys want me to go in more depth about feeding filler rod, awesome. I will totally do that. Just wanted to pump out a quick video for you guys. Um, it's 4th of July right now and I didn't have much going on today so I came down to the shop, figured I'd film for a couple hours, see if we couldn't get enough content out to do a short little video. So if you guys like this video, hit that like button. If you want to stick around and see Weekends Away episodes of different fabricators and welders, do that. If you want welding tips, shop tips, stuff like that, hit that subscribe button guys. If you didn't like this video, I'm sorry, I try. Either way, you guys have a good day. I appreciate it. We'll see you next time.